Okay? If your clay is too dry as well, it could crack also, but the compression will help prevent it. I rolled this slab a little thinner than the last ones because I want to see what the difference is. These ones that I made have like a, 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 a crimped edge. They're a little easier to clean up than the other ones and the cutter that we're using just has that kind of wavy line or you do the straight line ones. I'm gonna show you how to make both. Um, you could use your metal rib from your toolbox to do this or the credit cards or the communal tools. Just remember to put the tools away when you're done. Don't leave them on the table, okay? Once you've smoothed your slab out, you're gonna to wanna to cut out all the circles all at once from your slab. This is a really good project to work in a group of like three to five. So when you're working on this, you could have like two people rolling the slab. They bring the slab in, somebody else compresses it and cuts them out. Then they go back and roll the second slab because you're gonna make a bunch of them, right? And then the person who cuts them out kind of stacks them up. And then the person who has them cut out then makes them round. Maybe the same person makes the little uh, spout at the end too. Maybe there's another person who just makes the spout parts, flattens the bottom. So there's like five steps, but you could break those steps up and be like an assembly line. You just do one step. And then the next day, maybe you switch. And the idea would be that, let's say that as a group, you make 30 of them in one day. And the group is three people. Each take 10. The next day, have the same jobs or rotate jobs and do it again, and do it again, and do it again. 30 is the number you need to make to get an A. 30 good ones that I keep will get you 30 points of extra credit. If you make 30 of them and they all suck, you'll, you can still get an A potentially because of the PowerPoint, but you will not get any extra credit because I'm gonna scrap all of them. When you show me yours, I'm gonna go through them and just break the ones that aren't good because we're not gonna keep them if they're not good. You're probably gonna wanna make more than 30 to make sure you get the full 30, okay? Um, and like I said, I made 30 in a day, so you could do that too. I'll make 100 today. Uh, and we wanna make as many as possible. So first, I'm gonna cut them out. When you use these cutters, they can warp a little bit. So don't let them warp when you cut it, because then you'll cut out an oval. So set it down and press like straight down on the top. And then you can kind of like turn it a little bit, and then it'll come out. When this comes out, it's gonna stick in here and you don't wanna dent it with your fingers because you're gonna have to fix that dent. So if you put all four of your fingers on the inside, on the edge right here, and then you just very gently press down like that, it'll separate and you won't leave any mark on it, okay? And so you can cut them out. So one person could cut them out, like I said, like this. If you're gonna use like these crimped edge ones, uh, they're a little firmer. They don't bend as much because the metal is thicker. So I can cut it out and set it down. Now, when I cut them out, I don't want to cut it out over here. Cut it out as tightly as possible. Be as efficient with the clay as possible because you're going to um, need to make as many as possible. So don't waste it. But also don't spend a super long time trying to be super efficient. Go fast. That's also another key is to move quickly. So if I switch between each one to maximize it, it's just gonna take more time. If you have some leftover, it's not the end of the world, right? So while I'm doing this, obviously someone could be rolling a slab, somebody else could be taking these and doing the next step, right? And so if you work as a group, you'll work a little faster, but you'll also get better at your individual job because you're doing the same thing over and over again. If you have to stop and then do this next step and this next step and this next step, you're not getting that repetition that makes you good at it. I'll take this, ball it up. Always ball your scraps up. They dry less quickly, it makes it easier to recycle. Always ball them up. And now I have these uh, little discs to work with. Now, when you look at the straight edge ones on camera, you can see really close. The edge is kind of rough, right? And it has like little dents and things that we need to smooth that edge out the same way that we smoothed out the edges on your um, cups. We beveled the edge. We're gonna do that as well. I have a sponge that has some water in it, but not much. I put just a little bit of water on it and then I can slowly turn it with my finger and I'm pressing with my finger into that edge like this and it's pressing it down and it's rounding out that edge. I need to then round out the other side as well. 
And now the edge, you can see, is it's not perfect, right? We're not looking for perfect, but it's much more smooth. If I compare that, we need to round the edge out a little bit. You can see one's rough and one's smooth. Now, these guys don't need that. We really can't do it, and it doesn't need it as much because it's more textured. You won't notice it nearly as much, and it's easier to clean up. So you get to skip that step when you do these smaller ones. So any step skip is gonna make it a little faster. Okay, so once you've smoothed them out, the next step is going to be to change their shape a little bit. And so if you were working on your own because you don't want to work in a group, maybe on the first day, you cut them all out, smooth them all out, wrap them tightly in plastic, and then the next day you can do this step. You could work on your own and work in multiple days, but if you work in a group, you get to work all in one day which you don't have to worry about the clay drying. Okay, the next step is gonna take a little bit of practice um, because you gotta get it right. These uh, uh, foam pieces work better than your sponges because it's denser. You have to push harder, it works better. So I've got a bunch of these, they're couch cushions. So you know when you see a couch on the side of the road? If you ever see one without cushions, it might have been me. Just take the cushions. Open the cushion up, take the foam out. Here we are, okay? I haven't done it in a long time, because I have enough. But um, these guys are the ones that I made. There's different shapes. If you cut out really small ones, the smaller ones might work be better. There's some that are a little bit larger. So if you look at them, like this one is just larger than that one. This larger one might work better. Try different ones, find one you like. Um, get a Sharpie and put a line on it so you know which one it is, it doesn't matter. Don't drop these, they'll break. When you're done using them, set them down on their flat bottom so they won't get knocked over. Don't set it down like this because they'll roll off the table. Next step is gonna be to put the tip of this into the center um, and then you're gonna push down firmly and then roll it around like this. The down is the most important part, like all the way down, because we wanna push this clay as far down onto this piece as possible. If you push down too shallowly, you're gonna end up with a different shape. So you can see the shape difference. This one is a full cone and this one, it kind of flattens out. This won't work. Okay. In addition, sometimes if your piece of clay is big or this is smaller, you'll notice when you put it on here that there's a gap. You can see there's a little bit of a gap there. If you take this and very carefully push it down a little bit more onto here, that's going to make it a little bit taller, which will make it better. We don't want these to have, we want them to kind of have a side that starts to straighten out. So if you look at it on the screen, we want it to go not just straight out like this, we want it to kind of curl in a little bit, like a bowl would curl in and be a little taller. Okay, the next step I need to do is I need to flatten the bottom of these. They can't be round like this. So I'm going to press down on this very lightly on the bottom and I want to get it level. Now I can eyeball level because like level to me is a usual thing. What you can do is do it on the banding wheel and then spin it and come down to the bottom and it, just look at it at eye level and you'll see that it's level. You can't see that from up here though. You've gotta get all the way down here and look at it. And close to level is what we want. The next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna put my fingers, either my uh, thumb and my middle finger or my thumb and my index finger. I'm gonna put them uh, with a little gap between, like a half an inch between. I'm gonna put the end of a paintbrush or the pin tool is really good, it works really well. And I don't wanna lean the pin tool out. I don't wanna bend it down with the pin tool like this. If I do that, it looks like this. This is wrong. If I do it like this, when you look at it, you're pulling the part where the wick comes in down, which means that you can't fill the oil high enough, it'll start spilling out. We want this to kind of be up a little higher. So if I was doing it on here, I wanna push out a little bit, but I wanna push in with my fingers too. So on this one, I pushed in with my fingers. And so you can see that spout is at the, at the level of the rim. This spout is at the level below the rim. That's wrong. 
We want it above the rim. And it might take you a few tries to figure that out. Test it on one. And just practice on one to get good at it. But that's what we're looking for, okay? And it's gonna be rounded. And then, when you have this thing round here, we don't wanna keep it round, we wanna very lightly point it. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Don't do this. Right, don't do that. Making like this little blade here and pointing it that much. It's just, it's round, then it's a little pointed. It's round, then it's a little pointed. Just that, all the way around, okay? So here is my Dia, I flatten it like that. I check the rim to see if there's anything I should clean up on it. When it's done, I can set it with my other one. Stack them maybe three or four tall.